Now, one of the biggest reasons Labor's voice to parliament is sinking like a stone in the polls is quite simply the bullying. I mean, you would think that most Australians would actually back this voice if they respected all those institutions and all those business leaders and all those, you know, the supermarkets and the government bodies and the universities and teachers and journalists and celebrities and even the sports bodies now saying, yes, 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 say yes to Labor's voice. I mean, it's been overwhelming if these people had clout, we'd all be saying yes. After all, there's certainly no universities or government agencies, almost no businesses at all telling you publicly to say no, they wouldn't dare, even if they believed it. So you have to ask, when the business and political elite and the artistic elite say with almost one voice, say yes, why are most Australian voters now saying no? It can't just be, you know, about a difference of opinion on the issues, otherwise you'd feel you know, two sides match up. This also has to be a revolt against this bullying, a revolt against the elites who are arrogantly telling their inferiors what to do. It's really a class war, every bit as much as a race one. And for the business leaders who thought it was smart to get on board the voice bandwagon early on, when it's popular, now face a real problem here. Joining me is Dr. Mark Humphrey Jenner. He's an associate professor in the business school at the University of New South Wales. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. You've you've written about this uh, this dilemma. Here are the uh, all these business types who've invested in the voice with hard cash quite often. Don't they run the real risk now, where the, seeing where the public's going, of actually offending their own customers? Yes, well, first, thanks for having me. And you're absolutely right. So, so we're looking at Rio or BHP or West Farmers. They put $2 million each into this. And you're wondering, well, now that the public is turning against it, well, what do their customers think? Or what do their own employees think? After all, if their employees are more erring toward voting no, then what do they think when the corporation is publicly saying yes? What do they feel about whether they can publicly express themselves? And do those employees fear that they might face recriminations? And that obviously is going to lower employee morale, which clearly is going to harm productivity. But you've also got the customer story as well. So we saw Big W, for example, well, it's gone back and it's yes support, but also myriad other companies would also be seeing that 56% of the population is now intending to vote no, according to the red line poll. And it goes up to 59% when people are actually more informed. You have to be thinking, well, are these companies now having a bit of buyer's remorse? Hence why we're seeing some of them go a little bit more quiet at the moment. Well, it's interesting. I mean, you mentioned Big W. They, they were forced to pull a recording from their stores telling shoppers, uh, that, you know, uh, the voice was a great thing. And that is after a revolt, it said, from, from they called it not a revolt, feedback from staff and customers. So you're right. I mean, I just wonder what... But how then did... How is it that so many Australian companies signed up to the Yes campaign when the it looks now, you know, a huge majority of their customers are against it? What, what does it say about that difference there? Well, I would suspect that they signed up to the Yes campaign back when they thought that the polling was heavily in favour of it. So they thought this was going to be a safe choice. They thought they'd get support from their customers or their staff and also get buy-in from the government. Because if they're putting all of this money toward the Albanese government's proposal, well, they would hope that at least they get some positive feedback from them. So they would be hoping for that. However, now that public sentiment has turned, well, they don't even get the morale from staff or the customer buy-in. And then they're potentially buying into a voice that would ultimately lead to treaty. And if you look at the actual fine print of the treaty, we'll go into the Uluru Statement. Underlying the Uluru Statement was a rather long document. And that would call for a proportion of GDP to be paid out as a form of, quote-unquote, compensation. Now, that obviously needs to be paid by someone, which you would think would be the corporations. And therefore, the corporations <laughs> are seemingly spending money on something that is actually going to harm their bottom line. And obviously there would have to be a business reason for it, you would hope, which would hopefully be to try to carry support with customers or government, but that doesn't seem to be going well for them at the moment. Well, you wonder how they've gone into this. I mean, as you've uh, written, uh, Mark Humphrey, Jenna, that uh, the, here, are, here are companies like West Farmers and BHP that donated to the Yes campaign $2 million of shareholder money without, to my knowledge, asking any shareholders. I certainly wasn't asked. 
Uh, Mark Humphrey Jenner, great to talk to you. Great piece in The Spectator. I urge people to read that too. Thank you for your time.